Well, hello everyone. This is Ryan coming to you live from my fabulous Victorian lair here at Cthulhu Cottage for, you guessed it, another episode of Tea Time Chat. Today we have a very nice cup of constant comment, which I think is the most bizarre name for tea ever. Today's constant comment has cream and sugar, as usual. I think a better name for this particular tea might be something like Chatterbox or STFU tea. Um, anyway, today we're going to talk about my history with the guitar. This is something I was thinking about after I did the last one. I really want to record this for posterity, if nothing else. Um, so I want to talk about how I got started with guitar and kind of how my journey has progressed over the years. And um, over here I've got uh, my usual gear, um, which if I ever get a better camera, I will do some reviews of my gear. But I'm not sure that uh, the recording quality I have now would make it worthwhile. Anyway. Um, I forget exactly when I started playing guitar, but I was in middle school at the time, and um, that would have been probably like 90, 91 through like 92, 93 school year, something like that. Um, I think I was in seventh grade at the time. I remember... Um, I was just breaking into middle school at the time when grunge hit. Like I remember going to the bus stop one morning and one of the girls from my neighborhood was singing Nevermind from Nirvana. I remember the day that that kind of hit, the, it became popular, so that dates me quite a bit. So um, I guess I was influenced primarily to start playing guitar by that whole scene, the all the alternative ni early 90s alternative music scene um, as well as Metallica I was getting into Metallica at that time as well and again I, th I believe this was about in 7th grade um, so that would have been probably um, the 92 91-92 school year something like that um, it may have been over the summer I forget but um, anyway I started off on guitar with a cheap acoustic pawn shop special. My, I remember my parents bought that for me. may have even been a birthday present. I don't know. Again, that's been a while. So I started off with professional lessons and with that, uh, that acoustic guitar and I started off using the um, a classical music curriculum and I forget the guy's name whose book it was. If I can look it up, I may put it in the comments or the annotation. Christopher Parkening, I believe that's who it was. Um, he was a student of Andrew Segovia or someone like that. Um, so, yeah, I started off doing the, the classical thing, um, you know, for a few months, trying to learn, you know, to read music and play classical and at some point that went out the window and I was like okay I want to learn how to play songs um, prior to that of course I had um, you know I got my guitar and I went back to this thing called the library it's not library it's library um, it's a place that has books and I checked out a book which means you borrow it um, from the library about how to play guitar and I remember using that book to learn how to play chords um, you know you had the chord charts and you're like this here this here and this here and do this um, so I remember learning that the book also told you how to tune the guitar to itself and that was I remember my first day of learning that and then um, once I got the guitar in tune with itself my parents were like oh wow that sounds so much better 
Um, and then, so I had this basic background before I started taking lessons. So I knew like all your basic open chords, you know, your G, A, C, D, E minor, A minor, all that business. So I knew that beforehand going into lessons. So at some point during lessons, you know, like I said, we did this classical guitar thing, and then I was like, okay, I want to learn songs. And um, I think the first song on guitar I may have learned might have been Runaway Train by Soul Asylum. And you have to remember at this point, I'm like in seventh grade, so... Um, you know, I think you're allowed bad taste in music when you're in middle school, as long as you grow out of it. Um, so that was very, you know, guitar strummy song. I think it might have been in the key of C. Um, so that, and then from there, I branched out and learned a bunch of other alternative songs, like um, I think there was at one point Pearl Jam's Daughter. Um, I remember learning that, um, and. For, from that point on, guitar lessons was, for the most part, learning songs, which turns out to be a pretty big waste. I mean, yeah, you can learn chord you can learn chords and, and how to change chords, and that's important when you're first starting out. You want to be able to play something and change chords and, and be entertained, and everything should not necessarily be just like exercise, exercise, exercise. So it's not totally worthless, but, I mean, it doesn't teach you, like, theory or chord scales or stuff like that, which is very important depending on what you want to do with guitar. Um, so at some point I progressed into um, Metallica and learning Metallica songs, and that was after I bought my first electric guitar, which you can see over here. Um, it's an Ibanez EX270, um, and I'm pretty sure that was like in 1993 when I bought that. I think it was in, during the summer of, of 1993 um, before I transitioned into high school that fall. So I think it was in the summer of 93. Um, it was it was uh, 300 something and change. It might have been like $375 back in 1993 money. Um, I remember I put it on layaway and then paid it off within like a, a couple weeks. I was doing summer work. I was like babysitting and um, whatever else. Excuse me while I get a refill. You can see my, my lovely tea kettle here. This is um, my grandmother's uh, great, no, excuse me, my great grandmother's tea service. Anyway. So I got that guitar, and then at that point I transitioned to learning more like Metallica, more metal type stuff. And um, remember, my first amplifier was um, I got when I was on a vacation to St. Augustine. We went with my family to um, St. Augustine to a big flea market down there, and there was um, this, this company, Harmony. And they had these little, cute little practice amps that were uh, battery powered or ran on an AC adapter. And so that was my first amplifier, little thing. It had probably a um, six or eight inch speaker in it or something like that. It, you know, you could get some clean and some basic overdrive, etc. And so I did that for a long time, played that little amp um, until some other later time in which I bought. Uh, this this is a Fender M80. It's a 1989 Fender M80, um, two channel, real spring reverb. It's a great amp. Um, and I bought that. It may have also been in 1993. I think um, perhaps later that year, or perhaps early '94. I forget which, but I know I definitely had it. Um, during the, m the most of, or the majority of my freshman year in high school. Um, and I remember buying that amp, um, doing a lot of yard work, and I remember I was replanting monkey grass in the front yard, and that's how I earned the money to, to buy that thing. And I got that used from a music store, um, and it was about 
three hundred something dollars also in um, you know nineteen ninety three money. Anyway, so at that time again, learning Metallica, I remember learning um, a bunch of Metallica songs. And this, at, up at this point in history, the Black Album had come out, and that was kind of my gateway into Metallica. And um, so I learned songs up until that point. And then um, at some point, I kind of liked Metallica less and started getting into Led Zeppelin. And this was uh, this was into my freshman year of high school. I'm pretty sure. And um, I remember the last song I ever learned a guitar lesson. This was Stairway to Heaven. Like, the whole thing. Like, including the solo, note for note. Um, and also I want to add, um, you know, I don't, I don't know if my guitar teacher was a bad teacher per se, or if I was a bad student, or if I was just more interested in learning songs and theory. But he taught me the G major, E minor scale. And I learned that thing, like, up and down, like, every position, up and down the neck. Like, I learned the scale really well, but what he did not bother to teach me is that I can play in any other key or mode, you know, any major, minor, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, uh, Mixolydian, by just moving the scale and just starting the scale on a different fret. I mean, that would have been really handy to know, but no, he didn't teach me that, and Embarrassingly, I didn't figure that out until, you know, maybe five or six years ago. But anyway, so learned that. He tried to teach me modes, which I didn't really comprehend at the time. Um, and so pretty much I stopped guitar lessons right around that time after I learned Stairway to Heaven. Um, you know, my parents just kind of got tired of paying for them. They were thirteen fifty a half hour at that point. I don't know what they go for today, but... Um, so at some point in middle school, I did the, the band thing, you know, where you, you and your friends get together, and you have absolutely no clue how to play anything beyond a few chords, but we had a band, and um, so we went through that. I, I wrote my first song. I think the first song I wrote was, like, instrumental. It was, like, all D chords. It was just, like, all different D chords. Um, and it was, I think... Yeah, well, I don't want to get into too much detail about that. Um, so after that, I, I joined, <coughs> excuse me, kind of my first real band in my freshman year of high school. Like, I went to high school and met this kid on the bus who ended up being, like, my best lifelong friend. And he was just picking up the bass guitar. So we kind of got into it from that. And um, there was a, a rhythm guitarist and a drummer, and they all kind of went to the same high school. And we... Uh, I think we went through different band names. At one point we were like Bloodshed, and at one point we were like Apocalypse or Free Beer or something. It was all ridiculous, but it was all metal. It was all like um, kind of speed metal-esque type stuff. And so my first band was, you know, learning to play, you know, this really pretty fast uh, thrash speed metal stuff, um, which was not, not bad. I mean, I didn't really solo that much. I mean, I pretended to a couple times and um, but it was really pretty heavy and um, it was good fun, it was a lot of fun actually um, <clears throat> and from there after that fell apart, that was a year or two years sophomore year maybe um, junior year maybe um, and then at some point Myself and the bass player kind of pulled away from that, and we started, we formed our own band, and um, picked up a drummer from my Latin class in my senior year of high school, and um, we did a bunch of instrumental stuff for a long time, just, which is really a lot of fun, by the way, and, um, oh, look at that, it's time for another refill, um, so we did the instrumental thing, and then my freshman year of college, I met this guy, uh, that's all the tea for today, um, I met this guy, Andrew, my freshman year of college, at kind of a, a weekly open mic thing, and he became our singer, we named ourselves High Carbon Steel, I'm not going to go into that, that's probably another video, um, and he was very much into the acoustic guitar strummy, so we would have like um, a mixture, when we played our very first show, 
which was at Under the Couch in uh, Georgia Tech in Atlanta. Um, it was like a third of it was like instrumental stuff where he just sat there on his ass on a chair. Um, the third of it was his songs, like his original songs, which were, you know, acoustic strumming, and we played along with them, and on one we kind of did these, you know, heavy power chord whole note things as he as he hit his chords, which was really cool. Um, and then a third of it was some, some songs I had started to write, and I had a couple songs at that point, which were kind of influenced by um, the local Atlanta music scene. I had been really into indie rock at that point, starting in my the summer before college, I had started really getting into, in, you know, indie rock and college rock and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, so that was good. We we let that, that happen a year, two years or something like that. We played some shows and we recorded a CD on a four track, which was a lot of fun. And then at some point, um, we got tired of that thing, so we kicked him out and... Um, you know, at some point I started trying to sing, which was, you know, I got better at it, but it was a disaster, and it's still kind of a disaster. Uh, we got a new drummer who moved down here from Ohio. He was in a doom metal band, and let me tell you, he was the business. Um, I mean, yeah, like, you want to, like, talk about a kick-ass drummer. It, it was him. Um, and then um, came across uh, our singer, who... Um, was ha doing the whole punk rock Danzig-esque type singing and so that turned out to be a really really good combination and we had a lot of fun we played a few shows like that um, we tried to record another CD we paid about seven or eight hundred dollars to record um, you know five or six instrumentals and one cover at that point the only problem is it was with me singing so it was the music turned out really good, but it was kind of a wasted effort. It's just not that good of a singer. And then we wanted to remix all of that with the new singer, but the guy that we used to record, unfortunately, it took him like a year to give us the, the source files on a CD, and by the time he did, the CD was so scratched, it was like unreadable, and then it's pretty much lost to history. I mean, we have, have the CD, but it's not the source files. Um, and then at, at some point, um, everyone kind of stopped having time for that. This is about 2003, 2004-ish. Um, I was going into grad school at that point. Like Our drummer was having his own business of being a personal trainer, and our bass player had just bought a house. And um, So everyone just kind of ha stopped having time for it. I, was, I moved to Washington, D.C. the summer of 2004. Um, so that fell apart, and then um, I'm sad to say I pretty much stopped playing guitar from 2004 up until about 2007 when I bought this house. Um, I purposefully didn't get cable TV because I wanted to pick up the guitar again, and then part of that was like if I'm going to play guitar, I'm going to learn music theory. And that's what I did. I went online and learned all of my chord scales, like all the keys, um, major, minor, um, melodic minor, harmonic minor, learned all the scales, or learned more accurately how to play different scales by moving your pattern up and down the neck to play in different keys and play in different modes. Um, so I learned how to do all that. And then um, step two was actually learning the notes on the guitar. Excuse me, which I'm quite embarrassed to say. Most of my history, I knew only the notes on, you know, the low A string, the low E string, because that's where your chord roots are, right? And then, of course, the high E string, because it's the same as the low E. So I really only knew those notes up and down the neck. Um, and then, so I made a, made a concerted effort to learn every note on every string of the guitar, so I can just say, okay, yeah, this is uh, F, F sharp, whatever. Um, and that is a really important step in your music career if you're playing lead guitar, because you have to be able to target notes during chord changes and um, all that. And um, it wasn't wasn't as hard as I thought it would be, but 
so now when I practice, you know, I'm I practice trying to play a good melody and target the notes, and you know, of course, I, I practice technique some too, but um, yeah, so that that's kind of what what I'm doing now. Um, and I haven't had a band since 2003. I've jammed with a few people since then, but um, you know, that's how I got started on this whole YouTube thing, which we talked about last time. Um, and my goals for the future is just to continue to improve in technique and in theory and diversify different styles. Um, metal and, and classic country are my two, I think, bread and butter um, in terms of what I, what I want to play well. And of course the whole horror punk with guitar solos, and I guess that's more or less metal you could say. Uh, but I definitely want to continue to improve in technique. I'd like to be able to sweet pick. But that's really hard. Um, I don't. I don't really sit around and practice it either. So. But um, and of course, I'd like to be able to develop my skills in bass guitar and um, singing, so I can do my own band. I mean, I feel so incredibly limited not being able to sing or have access to a singer. So, you know, pretty much like it's instrumentals until I get better at singing. So anyway, that's a brief history of me and the guitar. Um, I'm, I'm maybe do more videos later about the gear I have had and used and all that. But cup is empty. It's time to stop. Um, you know, check out my most recent video was uh, Fuhr Elise or Fuhr Elisa in German. Anyway. Thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned. Have a good one.